Hello there. Oh, uh, it's, it's me, Valen Ark. Well, you can see maybe that we're, we're undergoing some changes here in Valentown. You know, the snow is out. The flowers are in. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. Hope you enjoy those smooth spring and summer breezes. Uh, anyway, let's let's continue on learning Japanese, shall we? Then I'm going to take you from this beautiful scenery here, the sounds of the birds chirping, to uh, this completely blue screen. Or is it green? Argue in the comments. Like and subscribe. Thank you. Uh, well, as you can also hear, we got some new tracks. I'm tired of that old piano, and uh, this is what we're doing from now on. Great. Today, we are going to move on with vocabulary. And we're going to start off smooth with this. And uh, you, you might you might immediately say, hey, Valen, that's not vocabulary. That's an entire sentence. And you'd be correct. It is. But sometimes uh, towards the end of that vocab list, we got phrases and stuff. Okay? It's just how they do it. They throw in some phrases into the vocab list towards the end so that you know what's going on when you see them in the chapter. And uh, that's why we're going to we're gonna learn them. We're not going to cross them out like that, because your buddy Vela can't draw a straight line unless he holds shift. And then, even then, in Illustrator, it doesn't work. Uh, okay. Uh, one quick thing, though. If you went over to Denisowski lately, you might come across this completely blank screen. Uh, or you might see some kind of server hosting issue. I don't know if Mr. Paul Denisowski has decided to not pay his uh, website bills. But all of a sudden, it's gone. I mean, I've looked at this website for over 10 years, and it's never had an issue. So, look, if that's what he's decided to do, that's uh, up to him. I can't stop him. But I just want you to know, if you... If you have issues with this page in the future, because maybe maybe he just forgot or something, I don't know. Maybe it's coming back. I do like it. It's very nice and clean. But if you have issues with it in the future, you just go to Google and you type in "you know no ni vocabulary." And like I said many episodes ago, you're gonna you're gonna see a lot of them. Okay, look, you got some apps here that deal with it too. I would click this one here by astr.tohoku.ac.jp. You click them and uh, check it out. They, they got this site here, and you can go, yeah, vocabulary. All right, you can, you can click this file here. It's going to give you some kind of download, and uh, it, I mean, you can open it in WordPad. It's I'd probably open it in Excel or something if you have some kind of a like table reading program, which uh, I do not on this computer. So, look, here it is in Notepad. It's the same thing that was on uh, Mr. Denisowski's page, okay? Pretty much. Um, you'll see it progresses to Lesson 2 here and Lesson 3. It's all compacted into one file, basically. The only difference to the one we were looking at is it's missing a few things towards the end, but your old pal Valen has uh, almost all of Mr. Denisowski's website printed out on actual paper. Yep, from my old notebooks. They're in there somewhere, so I can keep track of that for you guys. I'll throw them in the videos. I, w I will teach you the extra vocab, but other than that, it's mostly here. So, you know, use use this website or use a different one. It doesn't matter. Anything's fine. Okay, just, just Google it, and that's it. All right, so one of the next ones on our list was Kochirawa and then something sang. This. Okay. This is, and then we've got in parentheses here, Mr. And Mrs. Miss. Um, and why is it in parentheses? Because, well, y you hopefully know mostly what's going on here. Sung can be used for Mr., Mrs., or Miss, and, and really it's not even any of those things. In Japanese, it's simply just an honorific after a name. Okay. And you don't want to call somebody by their name without that. Okay. So, also we see we have the is bucket, right? It's going straight there. Wa and des. So, we know right off the bat we're saying 
something is Mr. or Mrs. or Miss blah 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 and that's it so what what is that something what is this well can you read it in hiragana uh, I think you should be able to ko chi ra kochira kochira wa something something san des okay so what are we saying this might throw you for a loop we're saying this is mr or mrs or whatever blank this is mr smith sure why not kochira wa smith san this okay but valen you taught us another word for the word this. And that was kono. Remember when we learned kono, sono, and ano? This, that as in that near you person I'm speaking to, and that as in that far away from us speaking over here. Remember that? Remember this? Because we did it a billion times and I drilled it into you, hopefully. Well, there's actually two major sets of these char or these words, I should say, not characters. We've got kono, sono, and ano. But we also have kore, sore, and are. Right? What's the difference? Well, when we use kono, sono, or ano, we need after them something, a no usually a noun. I'm gonna say in, in almost any case, it's gonna be a noun. Could it be an adjective and then a noun? Sure, because ultimately you're ending with a noun, right? We're saying this book, for example, right? Kono hon, this book. That's when you would use kono, sono, or ano. Kore, sore, or are is not followed by a noun or something like that. It's taking the place of the noun. So in English, when do we do that? Sometimes we do that with the word it, right? Instead of this book, we could just say it. So this book is green. You would need to use kono, sono, or ano. Right, well, in this case, we're using this, kono. Kono hon wa, and green is midori. Kono hon wa midori, this. But if we're just saying, it's green, we could just say, kore wa midori desu. However, here's where it's going to get a little confusing. Uh, so, don't dwell on this. Accept what I'm about to say with you, and then let your brain just move on. These also mean this, that, and that. And then they follow the same pattern as sono is uh, that near you person I'm speaking to. And so is sore, right? And are is that way over there, away from us. Same as ano, okay? So if you kind of think about it as you need... You're describing some kind of noun when you use kono sonorano. That's a good way to think of it. And if you think about, well, I'm not describing a noun. I'm just saying, I'm simply just saying this is or that is. That's when you would use kore, sore, or are. Okay. And sometimes in English, they end up being the word it. And that just doesn't exist in Japanese. So that's why they get thrown into this column here. So anyway, okay. If this is not sinking in, don't worry not the purpose of this lesson. The reason I'm introducing it to you right now is because I want to tell you that kochira is simply the formal slash polite way to say kore. This. Okay? So that's why 
were saying, this is Mr. Smith. Would you say, kore wa Smith san desu? You could. But if you want to be super polite because you're talking about somebody else, you would say, kochira wa, kochira wa Smith san desu. Okay. Very good. That's that. You could use this with anybody's name. Okay. And it'll work just fine. Could you use it with other stuff too? Uh, sure, probably. But usually only just names. It's, this is just when you're introducing somebody, okay? Good. Uh, next we also had... This. Something. And then can you read this? We actually went over this a long time ago when I first introduced you to the structure of sentences in Japanese. So, number one, we've got... Hiragana here. Hiragana, 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 hiragana. And this is the only kanji in this sentence. And if you threw it into your rotation back when I first taught it to you, you should know it. Uh, otherwise, don't worry. I'm going to tell you. But first of all, let's let's sound these out. Ka, da. And then something. Ma, shi, ta. And I'm going to tell you that something is ki. All right, so kara, ki, mashita. And again, take note, I am not saying karakimashita, I'm saying karakimashita, right? It almost sounds like mashita, right? Because that that little I that's in there technically is like, a, well, it's, it's almost silent, okay? That's what's going on there. And we, we've gone over that a lot of times, so... It should start to be sinking in now when you see she in, in like the middle of a word. A lot of the time it's going to end up being softened, almost to be being silent like that. So we got I, he, she, they uh, came from somewhere. Okay, and you could throw in, look, you want to throw in America, <laughs> America, Ame. And this is how you would say it in Japanese, too. Okay, we're going to go over that today as well. <laughs> Actually, next. America. Uh, so you could use that here. America kara kimashita. And that really, this, this stuff isn't there, right? We're not saying watashi wa or anything else. We're just saying America kara kimashita came from America, right? So why do I put in parentheses here? I, she, he, they, whatever. Because this is assumed by the context. You don't need to write any of this stuff in Japanese. And a lot of the time, it won't be written. You'll just literally have only this portion here, which is the direct equivalent of what's written here. Right? America karakimashita. Came from America. So you just assume this stuff. If the person is... If you're talking to somebody and you say... You know, you're introducing yourself and you give your name. Beiren this. And then you say, America karakimashita. It's clear that you're in that sense you're saying I came from America. If you're talking about somebody else, Smith Sang, Smith Sang wa, and then you're saying something, 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 he's a doctor, he's a researcher, blah 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 blah. America karekimashta. Well, you could be saying he came from America, right? It's all based on context. So in Japanese, you don't need to throw any of that in there. If you want to be very clear, you could. You could you could literally say Watashi. Well, open the is bucket, right, and connect it. Uh, America. Karakimashita, right? You just throw this bit down here, and it would close off the end of the is bucket. Because this is something we haven't really talked about yet, but wa opens up the is bucket, as we know, right? But we don't have to end it with des. We could end it with a verb. Ooh. Interesting. Don't worry about that right now. Just know that this this is what this phrase means, okay? Do you need to throw these phrases into your rotation? No. Um, I think throwing into rotations is going to be more for just the basic vocabulary words. So, for example, if you want, you could throw kara into your rotation and say from. Okay. And if you remember, we, we actually did this word. So this is the past tense of the word kuru right the past tense of the word kuru 
or technically speaking, see, because kuda is a casual form of that word, right? Technically speaking, this is the past tense of the word. Oops. Kimas. Kimas. Right? Uh, default slash casual, right? And then this one is the polite form. Uh oh. Always, always, Valen. Why do you always do that? Kuru and Kimas are the same exact word. They use the same exact kanji. The only difference is the ending, making them default, right? Not This is not impolite. This is just extra polite, Kimas. And this would be the past tense of that extra polite version. And that's typically when you're giving a self-introduction. That usually means you either are meeting the person for the first time or you you don't really know them very well. And in those cases, you usually want to use the polite form of uh, everything. <laughs> so that's why we're going for Kimashita there, okay? So that's what's going on there. Clear it out. Get it get it out of here. Boom. All right, and then boom. This, I want you to throw this in your rotation. This is a an actual vocab word, and uh, I do believe it is on the vocabulary list. And it's, it's just katakana, right? So it should be nice and easy for you there. Boom. America. I've also written the U.S. And why is that? Because people here will use them interchangeably, right? Um, there is actually a kanji for the United States. Let's go over here. Whoops. An interesting, an interesting set of kanji here. Dei koku. And what is this? Rice. <laughs> oh yeah, and it's turned. You know, they've they've kind of started using it as USA ever since this word was formed for the country. Why are we? And, and koku is country. Why are we rice country? I don't know. Look it up. Okay, that's not the point of today's lesson. But uh, you could also say Beikoku. And when will you see Beikoku instead of people just saying right here, see also America. Right, if you click this. America. Never, never in your life will you see these kanji. <laughs> it will always be written in katakana. Um, America Gashu Koku is also another way to say United States of America. This part is United States. Gashu Koku. Anyway. When will you see Beikoku instead of America? Uh, typically for more formal documents. Some kind of head of state is talking about the actual country. They're going to say, in a lot of cases, they'll say something like this. If you're just talking to somebody out on the street casually, talking to your pal or something, a lot of people will just say America. And uh, as a former American, and as a person with many Canadian and Mexican friends. Uh, I don't like it. I don't like it. America is more than the United States. So I usually, when I'm referring to the United States, I usually say the US or the States or the United States or something like that. But in Japanese, you're just gonna have to say America because that's what people say, all right? Boom. Thank you, piano. Perfect segue into the next one. United Kingdom, another easy uh, cut the kind of word here and the vocab. We're just going to throw it right into the rotation, right? E, G, B, S, I, G, D, S. Okay, United Kingdom. Quick note about United Kingdom. I, G, B, S. Why? Okay. Oh, because I said I, G, D, S. Don't do that. I, G, D, S. There we go. Again, you're never going to see this kanji. It's it's uh, almost always going to be written in katakana. And you'll see here it says United Kingdom, Britain, Great Britain, England. Now that is going to trigger somebody from that region. <laughs> I can guarantee it. But Japanese people... <sighs> I'm sure there's many Japanese people that know the difference between all of these words. But for some reason in Japanese, there's only one word that refers to all of them. Okay, don't blame me for that. Just accept it and move on with your life, and you'll have a better time. Guaranteed. Igirisu. That is, 
United Kingdom, England, the UK. All right. Oops. Get rid of that. Thank you. Oh, we got another, another one right here. Super easy. Indo. Throw it into the rotation. Very easy. India. Indo. Indo is India. Not much to say about this. It's a nice, quick, easy one. It's a freebie. Throw it in the rotation. What else we got? Well, well, we've got Indo in here, but it's not the same thing. It's Indo Ne Shi A Indonesia Indonesia All right Indo Indonesia Indonesia Okay That's it All right Another word that the book wants you to know right away. It want the Minamo Nihongo wants you to know right away how to say Indonesia in Japanese. Uh, and here you go. You thought you were gonna get away with having a complete vocab rotation for today without Korean? Um, no, that's not. It's not gonna happen. Here we go. What is this? How do you pronounce this? Kankoku. And I actually should have written that up here, and I didn't. Uh, sorry. Oops. Kankoku. Right. And I really should have written it in Hiragana, but whatever. I'll do it next time. <laughs> Let's look it up real quick. Kankoku. Kankoku. Alright, South Korea. Boom. Yes, it could have been used as the Korean Empire between the years of 1897 and 1910 as well, but uh, it's, uh, we're just, it's South Korea now, okay? Um, arguably one of the more complicated kanji we've had in a while. Let's click it. All right. The kan portion of kankoku. Uh, I would recommend, as usual, with the more difficult ones that you're learning for the first time, to maybe slowly do it as you look at each step here. The animations go pretty quick. Uh, I mean, it follows the same logic as usual, but, you know, top left to bottom right. There you go. Okay, let's try it out. Kankoku. We're gonna do the kan portion of kankoku, right? Just like this. Illustrator, why do you always want to give me a circle? Come on. Massive. There we go. Alright, and this is gonna... You see how wide I'm doing it here, too? I'm glad I have screwed up immediately, because a lot of people will start writing kanji like this super wide. Remember, this... Look at the proportions here. This portion of the kanji should take up less than half. Uh, if we're looking at it, splitting it vertically like that, right? So already, if you're doing it this wide, it's probably already a problem because this is already like taking up the full square that you would use for the whole kanji. So here's what we're gonna do. Right, I'm gonna make it nice and compact here. Boom. Oops. Just like this. There you go. There is the kan portion of kankoku. And let's take a look at koku, which by itself is usually just pronounced kuni, which means just means country. Right? If you just if you use this kanji and say kuni, you're saying country. When does it turn into koku? Typically when it's attached to another kanji. In this case, kankoku. Right? Remember I just taught you Beikoku for the United States? Rice country, right? Uh, yeah. It's usually, if it's attached to something else to give, like, the actual name of a country, that's when you would use the pronunciation of Koku, right? The on reading instead of the kun reading, which, again, you don't need to know about that, but uh, as you get higher in the levels, you'll start to realize what the difference between these two are, and usually when they're uh, used. Anyway, the Koku portion... Have we gone over this before? I don't think we have. 
I think I've mentioned it, but this is a very useful one to know because it's used in a lot of, as you would imagine, names of countries. So, it's not that difficult either. Let's take a look. It's got the box. Just open up the box. Give it the corner. And then do the inside. And then close the box, okay? It's not that crazy. We're gonna do the koku portion of Kankoku now. Open the box. And this is huge, by the way, but whatever. And then give it the little dot there. There you go. And then close off the box. Boom. Done it. All right. This is Kankoku, South Korea. And uh, after all those really easy vocab words, you might have been feeling lazy and you might be like, oh, I don't want to do this one. Uh. This is the most important one for today's lesson, and because it's practicing these over and over again in your rotation, the, the more like complicated, like filled with uh, different strokes characters is the best thing to do for your brain, um, because they they get you in the habit of writing stuff over and over and over again. That's actually the wrong order. Um, writing the correct order over and over and over again um, helps you get in. Uh, well, it just helps you form good habits, okay? So, um, do not skip out on this one. If you skip out on any of them, which you shouldn't, definitely don't skip out on this one, okay? All right, good. That was South Korea, Kankoku. So that wraps up vocabulary for now. Uh, according to this list, you've only got Chugoku left, which is China. We're not gonna do that right now. China. Uh, we're gonna do you next time. Um, I think there was a few more, maybe, from the original Denisowski list, too. I'll check. I'll check for you guys and make sure you know. All right, but for now, we're gonna move on to the continuation of the chapter. Actual chapter one of Mino no Nihongo, if you happen to be following that book. If not, no problem. Just follow me along here. And uh, we're now on the page before the activities in the chapter where they are introducing, um, or I should say, they're showing you an example conversation. And I think that's a good idea. I think it's a good idea to look at example conversations like this. So if you have the book, you might notice it says something like this too, chapter one. Uh, and then we learned this word last time. Remember this one? Well, in case you don't, I've written the reading up here. Haji. Hajimemashite, right? And I told you, don't don't go nuts with this one, but the book likes it, so that's why we're using it, okay? Which just means nice to meet you, right? Chapter one, nice to meet you. And we're starting things off with uh, two kanji that I've never shown you. <laughs> why have you done this, Valen? Um, well, I've given you the readings right here, right? You can read these. You should be able to read hiragana. So you don't need to memorize or throw into your rotation the this person's name. It is a name. That's what I'm telling you right now. Takahashi. Takahashi. All right. This is a common last name. It's like it's like the Smith of Japan, right? It's very very common last name. Takahashi. And uh, so Takahashi. And you'll notice uh, also, I haven't I haven't thrown in Sang here. Why? This is actually a, like, kind of like a high-level point, but when you have some kind of, um... How, how should I put this? Like, you're, um... Like for example, you're a textbook, or you're putting together some kind of chart or something that's uh, showing person A and person B talking to each other. It's just... You, you just don't put san there. You don't say... You don't keep saying Mr. Takashi, Mr. Takashi, Mr. Takashi. You just say Takashi, right? Uh, similar in English, you know, if we said, uh, Mr. Smith, like, in the actual text, that would be okay. But if we were, like, um, writing out, you know, an interview, and we had person A, person B, Mr. Smith, uh, Mr. Jackson, we, we don't need to keep saying Mr. now, do we? We just say Smith, and then colon says blah, 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 Jackson, blah, blah, blah. All right, that's, that's all that's going on there. For those of you who... Are curious. I know somebody's gonna be like, "Why isn't he writing song after he made the point that you should always write song?" That's why. 
Got it? Good. <laughs> um, all right. Well, we also went over this last time. What is this? Sound it out, boys and girls. Bringing in that smooth jazz for you to say good morning. Because you know that's what this means right here. And how do we pronounce it? Ohio gozaimasu. Ohio gozaimasu. That means good morning. That's what Takahashi is saying. Okay. And then, somebody else we got here sounded out. Sa. Sa. Ki. Sasaki. Another very common last name. Sasaki. And I don't think these are the names in the book. I, I have made up. I've changed things around to be my own stuff so that we're not directly copying the book, okay? So that, if you're curious, that's what's going on. Sasaki. Mr. or Miss, we don't know. We don't, we don't have a picture here. We're not sure. Sasaki says, Ohio gozaimasu. Hey, good morning. This person also says good morning. And then they say, Takahashi, right? This is this person's name. Takahashi-san, comma. Mr. Takahashi, all right, actually addressing the person. Takahashi-san, Kochira wa John san desu. Would you look at that? It's the phrase we just learned today's vocabulary. Kochira wa John san desu. What is this saying? This, we got his bucket, is John. Taylor. Boom. So, what do we got so far? Ohayo gozaimasu. And then Sosaki-san says, Ohayo gozaimasu. Takashi-san, Kochira wa John Taylor-san desu. So, what is, what is uh, Mr. or Ms. Sasaki saying here? This is John Taylor. So, what can we imagine? What can we deduce right here? John Taylor is probably standing somewhere, maybe next to Mr. and Ms. Sasaki, right? This is John Taylor. And wouldn't you know it, Taylor. <laughs> Mr. Taylor has joined the conversation. Mr. Taylor has entered the chat. Hajime mashite, says Mr. Taylor. Nice to meet you. John Taylor this. Remember this? We don't need to say watashi wa John Taylor this. We could just say John Taylor this. And he's using the is bucket in the most simple form. I am John Taylor. Nice to meet you. I'm John Taylor. America Karakimashita. I'm from the US. I'm from America. Yo ro shi. Yoroshiku o negai shimas. Yoroshiku o negai shimas. Yoroshiku o negai shimas. Right? Remember, this is what we said can close out any kind of like formal meeting or, you know, you're, when you meet somebody for the first time, this is like the true nice to meet you um, or looking forward to working together or something like that, right? This is what you close out self introductions or greetings or any kind of meeting with to be super polite, super nice. All right, I will say that. It's very nice. So far, we've got uh, Takashi-san says, good morning. Ohayou gozaimasu. Sasaki-san says, ohayou gozaimasu. Good morning, good morning. Takashi-san, kochira wa John Taylor desu. And then Mr. Taylor makes, oh, oh, hey there, Mr. Taylor. Hajimemashite, John Taylor desu. America Karikimashita. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Mr. Taylor pops in with his perfect self introduction here. Okay. And let's start answering questions here. Why is the order on his name John Taylor and not Taylor John? Because remember, I told you as, a, as somebody who actually lives here, I would always do it just like a Japanese person would do it, which is to say reverse the order. Um, the book is written by Japanese people, <laughs> and a lot of Japanese people uh, 
don't look i'm not gonna say it's racist but it's kind of it's, it's a little bit <laughs> they don't reverse the order on foreigners names and it makes us foreigners feel like we're not part of the club even though we live here and pay taxes and work and uh, speak nothing but japanese but uh, i don't want to get into that look your buddy valen's gonna start going off so you could write this just the same as hajimemashite teira jong this teira jong this and that would be perfect as well okay either way so let's close out this conversation here takashi finishes the conversation and says takahashi hanako hanako this well we know this is how you just simply give your own name right takahashi hanako we know this person's first name now is hanako and i'm going to tell you we now know this is a woman as well miss or mrs takahashi right takahashi hanako this yoroshiku onegaishimasu so she's closing out the meeting as well and saying nice to meet you or looking forward to working together or something like that but in most cases if we have no context here and we don't know if they're like co-workers or or what we have no context at all we could default the translation of this to simply just nice to meet you right notice she did not say hajime mashite anywhere all right she just ended the conversation with yoroshiku onegaishimasu that is perfectly polite and acceptable so, here is the conversation. Now, could you read it as fast as I read it to you here? Maybe, if you've really been practicing, I'd give you plenty of time between each class, a week, sometimes two weeks, to practice the vocab and learn stuff. But if you couldn't, that's, that's fine, right? I'm used to reading Japanese. I live here. I'm a translator. You don't have to read it as fast as me or keep up while I'm reading it, right? I think the important thing to do when i'm reading big stuff like this like the first pages before the chapters just to try to understand the structure and understand why things are being said and why they're in the order that they're in or the placement or whatever it's not necessarily mandatory that you read it as fast i want to make that point because some people get very worried like oh i can't keep up reading it that fast that's fine you can also pause it right here pause the video right now and read all of this if you want and your own speed you could take a screenshot you could print it out and post it up on your wall if you want next to your picture of an adorable babby kitten he's so cute but uh for now that's the conversation and uh we're gonna move on so one last bit here before I close out for today. The next page, if you are following in the book, and if you're not, it's the next page for you anyway, because I'm giving it to you. Chapter one, and what does this say? I've given you the pronunciation up here because this is not a word that we've covered yet. But it's a good word to start looking at. You don't have to throw into your rotation until I teach it to you. But if you sound it out here, be, n, she, but we notice we have a tiny U here, so this is not she, it's now shu. U. Ren shu. What does ren shu mean? Practice. So what is this? This is practice, eh? Ooh, that sounds so fun, Valen. Glad you wrote it that way. Well, that's how the book writes it. And, uh, I'm a stickler for the rules. All right, practice A. So in this portion of the book, they'll usually give you, before each chapter, they'll, they'll always give you some kind of practice. And they'll, they'll kind of summarize the grammar up to that point. So if you had a hard time following the grammar that we've been kind of going quickly through up to this point, this is the part for you to kind of see, oh, maybe something clicks for you now. Oh, so this is the structure, and here are the, all the different options I can put inside the structure, right? So, for example, what am I saying right now? Watashi wa... I opening the is bucket. So, I, would we say is? No, we would say am, of course. In natural English and Japanese, there is no difference. It's always just wa and this for... If you're saying I, or he, or she, or it, or they, any of that, okay? 
So, watashi wa John Taylor desu. I am, I am John Taylor. Watashi wa, you could also say, what is this? Ginkoin? Remember this? I am a bank clerk, bank employee, right? Either one in English. Right? So you could say, you can see in the, the example, the, the grammar here, it's saying you could throw names in here. You could throw occupations. Uh, you could put whatever you want in here to describe yourself, right? And that's, these are the simplest forms of that grammar. So, oop. number two. Right? What is this? Well, same thing. I am, and of course we have the is bucket, right? But what is this? Ja arimasen. Not. So in English, would we put not at the end of the sentence? No, we would put it right after am, of course. But in Japanese, it's at the end. It takes the place of des. So sometimes you're like, oh, I see wa. Are we going to be is or is not? And we go and look over here, and this is like finalizing. It's closing the lid on the is buckets. Oh, you are is today, if you're des. And then you start over here and you say, oh, opening the is. Are we is or am not? You see ja arimasen here? Or if you see, remember, we could also say de wa arimasen. Oh. You have Jari Masen, you are not. Okay, you're closing the lid on the is bucket. That's how that works. Should be a review. So we have not. So I am not. What is this? A new name I haven't shown you. You can sound it out. Be. Mm. I am not Ben Becca. Uh, a German name, I believe. I am not Ben Becker. Okay, and then we can we can do this too. I am not. What's this? Haven't uh, looked at this one in a while, but we did go over it. It should have been your rotation. Kaishain. I am not a company. Oops. Employee. So this is, I, want, I just want to stop here and explain something real quick. Watashi wa kaishain ja arimasen literally means I am not a company employee. Now, if we were translating this from Japanese into English, could we say I am not a company, company employee? Yes, this is correct. As a translator, Depending on the context, I would probably indirectly translate this to sound more natural to say, I don't work for a company. Right? And I want to make something very clear here. Indirect translation is important because it sounds more natural in English, but we are not saying don't work. The, the verb for work is nowhere to be found in this sense. And neither is its negative form, don't work. And neither is the word for, for that matter. And that's a whole other topic that we're going to get into later. But this could still be translated into this if we're trying to translate from Japanese to English, right? The reason I'm showing you I am not a company employee, even though it sounds more stiff and maybe some not really natural in English, is because I want to make sure that you really understand each word that's being said here. When you get to a higher level, you can start translating into more natural English. But the reason I'm not going to translate it into perfectly natural English right now is because you're going to start getting confused. You're going to be like, I don't see the word work in here, right? That's because it's not in there, okay? Important notes that I just wanted to make real quick. So, this, you could again, you could put in names in here. You can put in occupations, anything you like. Just say, I am not something. All right. Number three, what do we got? Slightly more complicated one, but you should be able to read it. First of all, we got Anno, your favorite. 
that way over there. Ano hito, that person. And in parentheses, we've got kata, which is just the more polite slash formal way to say person, remember? So this would be kata. Okay. And we open the is bucket, and we close the is bucket with is, or am, but we also have a question, a ka. So we know this is a question. So what are we saying? That person is, and by the way, you could you, you choose one of these, right? You don't write them both. That's why this is in parentheses. I want to make this very clear. Some people sometimes don't follow the things that I think are very clear. <laughs> choose one of these this is the more formal this is the regular way to say it okay that person is well can you can you still read this maybe not because i don't have the pronunciation but this is the the name that we haven't learned but i use in the conversation from the the last screen that person is takahashi sung so we probably want to say mrs Takahashi question? That person is Mrs. Takahashi? Alright, and probably more naturally said into English. Is that person Mrs. Takahashi? Alright, you could also say it like this. Again, this is just the directly translated version of it. Okay. So, we've got questions here. We can ask, is somebody a name? We could also say, is that person Shiruba-san? Remember Shiruba-san? Uh, Mr. Silva? Is that person Mr. Silva? Or, what could we do? We could say, ano hito, or ano kata, ano hito wa dare? Deska? Remember Dari? Who? So, that person is who? Or, more naturally said in English, who is that person? And if you want, you don't have to say Dare. You could also say Donata. Again, this is the more formal, more polite version. So, as a little tip, if you were using Kata, I would probably use Donata. Just match your politeness and uh, match your formality throughout your words. That's a little bit more of a high level thing to do. So I wouldn't worry too much about it right now at the beginner level. But later on in Japanese, it's, it's a good habit to start forming now because later on in Japanese, whenever you're using formal language or casual language or whatever, you wanna be consistent throughout your whole sentence, throughout your whole paragraph or your conversation or whatever. So that's why I would use that. All right, boom, we've done those and Let's continue on. Number four. Let's read it. Taylor san. Alright, Mr. Taylor. Taylor san wa. Alright, opening the is bucket, closing the is bucket. And inside we've got America. Uh oh, remember this? We haven't practiced this at all. Hito. America hito? No. This is. America Jing. Remember, when we attach the kanji for hito or person after the name of a country or after a lot of words, it would become Jing, not hito, the pronunciation. The, the meaning is still the same. American, America person. So, American. <laughs> Again, America person turns into American, of course. So, what are we saying here? Mr. Taylor is right is bucket is american person so mr taylor is mr taylor is an this is not found in japanese anywhere uh, 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 nowhere because it doesn't exist in japanese we need it in english so i threw it in there for the translation mr taylor is an american boom Well, a new name here. Sound it out. We've got G, little e, and N. 
well, the letter, letter N mm, is the pronunciation, right? And some of you might look at this and you're fresh off of the last few episodes and you're still having trouble remembering katakana because there is this and then there's this. <laughs> These are kind of exaggerated versions so you can tell them apart. But we've got N mm and Sol, right? So be careful. If you think if you read this and said Jessol, is this Jessol? Nope, that's wrong. This is Jet. Mm. But you haven't had much practice with those two characters, so I wouldn't blame you. All right, give your, give yourself a little little pat on the back there and say it's okay. You can you can make that mistake. It's fine. Don't worry about it. All right, Jeng Sung. All right, this is uh, you know probably Jen. Uh, could it be a last name Jen like this? I guess. I, I don't know if anybody I've ever heard have that last name, but anything's possible. I would default to the most logical conclusion without any other information. I would just say this is Jen, and it's the first name. All right, but you would still use Sung to be polite. Jen Sung. Mo. What? Valen, what? Help. Okay, we, we went over this, I believe, last time briefly introduce this as also and the only character you need here is mo to say is also right we're opening the is bucket with mo and closing it with des for example right so i have to be careful here because i don't want to confuse anybody you don't need because you would usually open the is bucket with wa, right? You don't need wa mo. As a matter of fact, I shouldn't say don't need. You can't use wa mo. No. You, mo takes the place of wa. Okay? It's either wa, either or. You're either saying is or you're saying is also, right? In English, we have two words that are necessary to connect together to say is also. In Japanese, you only need mo. So don't use anything else, please. Thank you. And let's continue on here. Jensung, mo, opening the also is bucket, <laughs> closing it. Jen is also American, America person, American, America Jean, American is also. I, I guess you could technically you could say in English. Oops. You could just say American. You don't need an here, but for some reason I would want to say that. Jen is also an American, right? I guess because if we're being very technically correct here, this is not an adjective. Um, it, it is the person. So I think it is most correct to say an American. And again, this an does not exist in Japanese. I'm throwing it in there for the natural English translation. Okay. Good. So this is Mo. We can also say we don't need to use somebody's name here. We could say Kono Hito. Remember Kono? This person. And now we're using the same kanji twice with two different pronunciations, so be careful. This person is also an American, maybe you're you're looking at a lineup, and you are pointing people out at who took the pencil from 16 classes ago. Who took it? Uh, I don't know. We got uh, we got an American over here. This person's also an American. Well, we can deduce that at least an American took the pencil. Uh, all right, all right. Let's let's keep going. That's how you use also. Oh, lots of options for this one. <laughs> Lightning round. Smith Sung. Mr. Smith. Wa. Uh, is bucket, but we've got something in between the is bucket here, so be careful. No, remember the possessive particle? Possessive particle. This is kind of like the word of, remember? So whatever is after it belongs to whatever is before it. Just a heads up, in case you forgot. So, let's see what's going on here. Let's just start writing it slowly. Mr. Smith. We know we've got the is bucket. 
so we can just put it there is now what do we got here London Daigaku remember this is London University no possessive particle so whatever is after belongs to London University sensei oops teacher oh my god Valen <laughs> teacher period right because we've, we've, we've used is over here we don't need to say it twice in English obviously so Mr. Smith is London University teacher Mr. Smith is for example you could translate it as a London University teacher or you could say professor that's fine too or, if you wanted to indirectly translate this, you could also say Mr. Smith teaches at London University. That would be okay too. But nowhere in this sentence do we have the word teaches. Okay, it literally says he's a teacher of London University. And we've kind of, to, to make it sound more natural in English, we've translated it as Mr. Smith is a London University teacher. Okay, but there's many ways you can translate things like that. All right. And we've got here another new name, we assume, because we've got San here. B. Na. Right? Dina is, uh, well, typically would be a first name, I believe. So we don't necessarily need to say Miss Rina, because that would be weird to use Miss with a first name, I guess. Uh, but in Japanese, of course, you'd use sang to remain polite. Rina san wa. Whoa. Can you read these? No. Don't worry about it. I'm going to tell you what they say. You should be able to read these two, though. What is this? Remember? Byoing. Not byoing, because that's hairdresser. Byoing. This is a hospital, right? And what is this? This is a good one to know. You don't have to throw into rotation. Fuji. Like Mount Fuji. By the way, don't ever say Mount Fujiyama because you're saying Mount Fuji Mountain. <laughs> it just drives me nuts. It's either Mount Fuji or it is Fujiyama. Pick one. Please. As a translator, please stop. Okay, back to the... Calm down, Balen. Back. Back to this. Vina is... We've got the is bucket. And the same thing going on here. We've got a possessive particle here. What is this? Remember? Isha. Doctor. Doctor of... That's probably kind of hard to see. Why are you using white on bright teal here, Valen? Jesus. There you go. <laughs> is doctor of Fuji Hospital. And you can't spell either. Doctor of Fuji Hospital. So we could say Rina is a doctor at Fuji Hospital. That's that's okay. We could say that. Or we could say is a Fuji Hospital doctor. Right? That would be fine, too. Again, many ways to say it, but the point is... Uh, Rina is Dr. Possessive Particle of Fuji Hospital, okay? So what is the point of this part? This is to tell you. You can you can use the Possessive Particle anywhere, but especially in, in the is bucket, this is how you would construct it, right? If you want to say somebody is something of something, okay? That's how you do it. Now let's wrap things up here. Number six. This should be the last one for the uh, grammar practice before you get into the activities of the chapter, which we will maybe start next time. Um, number six. Emma Chang. Remember her? Emma Chang. Well, is bucket. So we know off the bat we've got Emma is. Well, oh, remember this? We got some numbers and. This kanji is sai. Remember? Years old. Emma is 11. You could end the sentence there, or you could say years 
old. Emma is 11 years old. Okay. What else could we say? Well, oh, here's a different one. Haruto. 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 What is this? We haven't used it, but we have learned it. Kun. Haruto kun. So we know this is a a young a young boy, right? Or a young man. It could be it could be used really for anyone who's male that's much younger than you. So I, I, I wouldn't know exactly what what the age is. So Haruto kun. Haruto is again is bucket is what do we got here 15 15 you know years old <laughs> running out of space and i'm using white so look it's almost the end of the episode just please uh for forgive me and relax haruto is 15 right haruto wa jugo sai right and when we said emma chan wa sai right we don't say juichi sai remember Jisai. And for 15, it is Jugo. Jugo say. But we could also say. Oops. Please erase all of this. Thank you. We could also say. Emma chan wa. Nansai desu ka? Question. Right? Emma is how old? Naturally put in English, how old is Emma? We could do the same thing for. Haruto? Haruto kun wa nansai desu ka? Haruto kun, how old is Haruto? Right? And what is this in the parentheses? We we did learn this real quick. I haven't used it. It's not, not used as often as nansai because it's the more polite version, more formal version of nansai. Oikutsu, oikutsu. So, Haruto kun wa oikutsu. Desu ka? It means the exact same thing. How old is Haruto? It's just being more formal or more polite. Okay. So this was a little bit of a uh, grammar review slash practice, right? Renshu practice. Before you start the chapter. All right. This, this usually, this part of the book just breaks down. Okay. Here's all the grammar we've gone up to this point. And you can see for each grammar piece, you can use it in all sorts of different ways. Right? Anything in these little boxes here are, you know, you can change them in and out for different stuff. And anything after it is the sentence, the, the grammar that it's teaching you. All right, so that's pretty much it. And that's uh, about all I have for you today. I hope you're enjoying the new tunes. Uh, if there's any sound issues, if something's too loud or too low, I, look, just, it, it's something I gotta deal with, and I will. But the first time I throw on new stuff, I just got to roll with it until I know, right? Uh, anyway, thank you to all the followers, everybody keeping up over on YouTube. Um, this this lovely background back here, this springtime view, I've got this and much more. As a matter of fact, I already uploaded it to YouTube. And uh, in 4K nonetheless, HD 4K all sorts of springtime views around Tohoku, northern or northeastern Japan. And YouTube has uh, taken two days so far and still has not finished processing the HD or the 4K. So I'm probably just going to have to re-upload it. I have scoured the Google and people have said, yeah, that happens and you got to just re-upload it. So you would have already had that video by now if it weren't for that. But uh, I will get on that next as well. But until then, until the next class, uh, you have at least a week, you know, maybe two sometimes. Sometimes I take a little uh, break to try to get other stuff done as well. Uh, continue with your rotations. Watch over this again if you need to figure out the grammar points. If you have questions, please send them to me over on Twitter. You can write it in the comments in, on the YouTube. You can send me a message here on Twitch or come on when I am live and type away right in the chat and I will do my best to answer your questions I have gotten many messages screenshots of people's work please keep it up it's uh it's encouraging for me to see how well that you are doing uh, because it means that I am at least teaching you correctly hopefully most of the time uh, sometimes I feel like oh man I'm going way too fast everybody's like 
what the hell is he talking about i can't read that fast we just learned these words why are you i'm trying to take it slow but at the same time i'm trying to pack in a lot of stuff into each episode so look uh we're gonna keep repeating stuff hopefully it'll stick in your head and if it doesn't that's okay you just ask me and i will explain something specifically just for you all right with that said uh look i gotta i gotta go all right you have yourself a good time uh i'll see you next time all right take care <laughs>